In today's video, I'm going to share the anatomy of a castle spinning wheel, like this one here. Hi there, my name is Brittany. If you're new to the Textile Indie YouTube channel, I share tutorials and inspirational projects. Check the description below for resources and to sign up for my email update list to get all of the great information that Textile Indie produces. Now let's dive in to the anatomy of my Kiwi Ashford spinning wheel. Before I go over each of the parts on my spinning wheel, I just want to mention that knowing these parts isn't critical to be a good spinner, but it is really helpful to know what they're called so that you can problem solve your wheel. If you're having problems in your spinning process, it's good to know what the different parts of your wheel are called. So as you're problem solving or doing research about how to solve those issues, you know what the parts are referred to. So first of all, the main part that is identifiable as a spinning wheel is the drive wheel. And that is the large wheel that spins or rotates as you treadle. And on the castle wheel, that's usually a wheel that is centralized. It's the largest part of the spinning wheel. And it often has grooves in the wheel, like this one does, where the drive band sits. And this drive band sits in the little grooves on the drive wheel and sits on the grooves up here on the flyer. And that allows or causes the spinning wheel to rotate. So next up, we have this situation up here. We've got the flyer, which is this piece that rotates around and around. That creates the spin in your fiber. And then you have the bobbin. And here's one that's not attached to the wheel. It looks like a sewing bobbin or a spool of thread, just without the thread on it. And once you spin it up, like I've started on this bobbin here, then this is what will be filled with the fiber that you've spun into yarn. And you can use it as singles or ply it into multiple different types of yarn. So bobbin, usually you have at least two for your spinning wheel so that you can spin two bobbins full. And then a third one is often helpful so you can ply those two bobbins together. Often spinning wheels come with multiple bobbins. Sometimes you have to purchase additional bobbins to have enough to do the projects that you wanna do. So we have the drive wheel, the drive band, the flyer, the bobbin. Now you have the situation in which the flyer and the bobbin are, are setting up between. You've got the two maidens and you have the maiden at the back that has a little attachment that the flyer sits in and the maiden in the front that the flyer sits in as, as well. And depending on the wheel brand and style, that is going to look a little bit different. For mine, the flyer clips in to the front maiden and that holds the flyer in place so that I can spin with it. Then in the front maiden, you have the orifice or the hole in which or through which your spinning yarn comes through. And for mine, the hole is actually in the flyer, threads through the flyer, and then there's a hole on top here on the flyer that the thread comes through and comes onto these hooks on the flyer so that they can load the bobbin. You're also going to have some tension knobs. And again, depending on the style and model of your castle wheel, those knobs will be a little bit different. I have an adjustment knob here. There's a line that runs up the side over the bobbin to hold the bobbin still and clips over to this other side of the wheel to kind of add tension. And the intention is that the flyer can rotate around the bobbin faster than the bobbin moves or the bobbin holds still entirely so that it can load the yarn that you're spinning. This section here, the part that houses the flyer, the bobbin, and holds this all together. This whole upper portion is called the mother of all. I don't know why, that's just what it's referred to as. So then you have this center beam. This is what the drive wheel is attached to and your two footmen. The two footmen are what attach to the treadle, which is the foot pedals at the bottom of the wheel, and they rotate around rotating the drive wheel. So you see this rotation here rotates the drive wheel. And then the treadles are at the bottom. Mine is a double treadle, which means there's two foot pedals and I treadle both at the same time. And it gets a slightly more even spin than a single treadle wheel would. Down here, I have two bobbin holders. These are basically a built-in lazy cate. So as you want to ply your yarn, you can pull, you can set both bobbins on each of these pins here and then uh, ply from there onto a third bobbin. 
One cool thing or feature of the Kiwi here is that this front footman lifts off and I can unscrew the sides and the foot pedals or the treadles lift up. I can tighten this up. And now I have a much more compact wheel so it makes storage a lot easier and you can travel with your wheel a lot more effectively because you can pick it up and move it and travel around with it without having to worry about the large size. I also have an Ashford Traditional and it's a lot larger and a little bit trickier to fit into my car when I'm traveling to guilds and other events that I want to travel with my wheel. The last thing to mention, because not every wheel has one of these, this wheel has a built-in yarn hook. This you slide into the orifice and you can catch the yarn from the bobbin, pull it through so you can start spinning. Not all wheels have one that's built in, but this Ashford Kiwi does, which is really handy because I tend to lose those if they're not attached to the wheel. Another thing that you might find on your castle wheel is a different number of grooves in the drive wheel and the flyer. And what this does is it changes the ratio or the speed at which your flyer is rotating per second or minute, depending on how fast you're spinning. So you can adjust the drive band into these different grooves and adjust how fast your wheel is going. So if you're in a larger section of the flyer and a smaller section of the drive wheel, then the amount you need to rotate the drive wheel is going to be more to get the flyer to rotate more often than if you had the drive band in a small groove on the flyer and a large groove on the drive wheel because the drive wheel would have to rotate less number of times the flyer will rotate more times creating more twist in your yarn that's a really brief overview of ratios i'll probably have another video with more in depth about ratios if you're interested you can also check out my spinning wheel um, ashford traditional video i go into more depth on ratios I think it's my jumbo flyer video. I'll put that up here and in the description below if you're interested in learning more about spinning wheel ratios. Well, that is the anatomy of a castle wheel. It's good to know these terms so that you can problem solve your wheel issues and know what things are called <laughs> for reference purposes. For more information on ratios, check out the video I've linked in the description below about that and subscribe to my email update list using this fancy QR code. I put out a twice a month email with all of the content that Textile Indy has put out in the last two weeks or so, and you can find lots of news and updates there. We also send out occasional coupon codes and information about upcoming courses and new products in our shop. So get all of the news from that. Until next week, happy making. Thanks so much for being here with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.